Chrome 3.0 and their MDLX Transformers line, this is their Starscream. What these figures are, are adult collectibles. They typically run somewhere in the $70 to $120 range, and they are Marvel Legends-esque scale uh, tra non-transforming Transformers. So Starscream here does not turn into a jet, but you can see just how beautiful this figure looks. Looking around the rest of the box, we can see the figure photography. We can see just how many accessories and poses you can get with this guy. One of my favorite ongoing lines right now is this 3-0 line. I've already looked at their Bumblebee, their Optimus, and their Cliff Jumper. Now we're going to look at the first Decepticon of this lineup. At least I've been able to get my hands on. That being Pretty Poison himself, Starscream. Here's the thing I want to point out. So, one, this figure's box is twice the size of Optimus's. Optimus's was this tall, but it's now even wider, probably for the wings. I also want to show this off how the figure is packaged, just because once you get into this type of money, people like to know that type of thing. Ooh, here we can go. Snug in there. So you can see, wow. So, <laughs> there's two different trays. On this first tray is just the cover, and then you have the figure wrapped in this plastic wrap. We can see a lot of faces and hands, guns, and then on the bottom is actually the wing pack. And then a couple of other, what looks like sword accessories maybe? So let's get this guy fully out. Here's how Starscream looks straight out of the box. And weirdly enough, without the wings, this design kind of reminds me of the Transformers 1 Orion design. Something about the boxiness, I think. But you can see, there's obviously a massive piece of the silhouette mis missing. Don't worry, we're going to begin to these wings in just a second. But first, just like Optimus, Bumblebee, and Cliffjumper, they gave you an instruction manual on the accessories and how the articulation is best utilized. I appreciate this because it lets you know about some of the places we need to look at in terms of brakes. It also shows you how to get the wings connected, how to change out face plates, spoilers I guess, and also how he can hold some of the accessories, some of the things that we need to do. It's also very keen to point out the things that best help with the foot placement and a little crossover gimmick with Optimus. So I enjoy these little instruction booklets. They are just a good way to let you know what the designers intended. But having looked at it, we now know here's the wings. Boop. And then here are these sword accessories. These guys connect to the wings somehow, according to that little pamphlet. Let me bring it back out just so I can actually figure out how. <laughs> yeah, these guys, keep in mind, Starscream here goes for about 120 bucks. There's a lot of small parts to keep up with here. Okay, okay, I'm seeing how it's supposed to go. So basically, you take the wing, you take this little part here, you see this? And we're going to more or less just put it in there, and it's going to be held in place by friction. Yeah, should it go in the other way? Does it fit better the other way? No, it's definitely supposed to go this way. Okay. So it's held there in friction. It's decently tight. Good little way to hang on to these knives, these swords. I'm not going to lie. I'm thinking I'm going to take these off and not display him with them. Just to make sure I never lose them. But there's what the wings are supposed to look like. And then we take this wing pack. And we have these ports here on the back. And we just put the wings on Starscream like so. Okay. It's secure. It doesn't snap in place or anything, but it's a secure placement. Okay. That is friction holding these wings in. That has made him just a bit back heavy, so we'll adjust his footing here. There we go. And there's our Starscream, more like how we'd expect him. And good God, that is so cool looking. This is, like, I love the, MDL, the MDLX, like, 3-0 redesigns of these characters. I thought the Optimus was my favorite one. Starscream, though, this looks like, I don't know, man. It, it makes the G1 Starscream, a design that I've always liked, but always thought was, like, kind of goofy. This makes him look menacing. I love this. But hang on, Ron Bonda John, I hear you saying. What about the Null Rays? It's not Starscream silhouette without the Null Rays. Well, don't you worry, children. We have no rays, and these are pretty wild looking. You're supposed to be able to hold these guys like they're just normal rifles, but come on, it's Starscream. We want them in the shoulders. You can see the that's actually really smart. So the handle of the gun that you would hold that's flat, that goes straight into the shoulder pad. Okay. Does it just go like that? Oh, that doesn't look right. Again, I'm going to consult the instruction manual. 
just to see. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. There we go. I just had to finagle a little bit more. Do, 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 do. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Oh my. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? In a very different way, it reminds me of Fall of Cybertron Starscream. The design's very different, but the, the intent here of giving a little bit of menace to the G1 look. That's one of my favorite Starscream designs. And this guy, he's just like a spiritual successor in some ways in my eyes. I, I love this. I... <clears throat> let's let's talk about it so looking at starscream of course he looks great the paint and consulting is great by the way there's so much paint on this guy that when you open the box there's just fumes of it it's it's really nice um there's the articulation we have a ball joint at the head and a barbell down below for the throat then you have a universal in the shoulder and a universal here for the armor pad because literally there's three points of articulation here right Universal, that leads into the shoulder pad. From shoulder pad, there's a different universal joint that goes into the actual arm, so that the shoulder pad can get out of the way. You have an upper arm cut. By the way, there's a butterfly joint up there. You have a double-jointed elbow, goes all the way in. You have a universal here at the wrist. We have an ab crunch. Check this out. Ooh, here it's a bit tight. Here we go. Goes way forward. And, oh, a little bit back. Here we go. Let me get his head back in. Do, do, do. You know, it's funny. With Cliff Jumper, I couldn't get the head out. Starscream, his just kind of popped off there, but still good. And then we have waist. Boop, boop, boop. We have universal at the hips, and all these armor pieces move to get out of the way. We have a double joint at the knee. Boop. And then down below that, we have a good bit of motion in the ankles, mostly of this big toe joint here. Also, I just want to point this out. Look at the knee detail. Look at that. You just keep folding and you see more of it come out. So my one big thing I'd say about Starscream, not a complaint, just a thing I would warn. He's covered in tiny pieces. Those tiny pieces are sharp. They could break off. So you got to be more careful with him than you would say Optimus. Optimus is thankfully more rounded off. Starscream looks like a man made out of knives. So be aware. It's not that the figure feels fragile. It's just there's a lot of tiny pieces to keep track of. Speaking of tiny pieces, look at the head sculpt on Starscream. This is one of my favorite looks for this character ever. It just looks so good, man. What looks even better is his alternate face with the smirk. So, the way this is supposed to work, according to the instruction pamphlet, I'm going to take the head off. Boop. Hang out here, Starscream. And then you slide the face out. Mm. Love that. Look at that. This goes right back on. Mmm. <laughs> I love that. Uh, we've already talked about the jetpack. We've talked about the guns. He also comes with a series of hands. Here, we're going to zoom out just a touch. So, these hands. We, of course, have the two closed fists that come with him. We have a couple of gestural hands. So, we have these kind of like speaking hands, like he's giving like a, a presentation on why he should be leader. We have a couple of splayed, more gestural hands, like he's maybe going after someone or he's like cowering for Megatron. And then we have two gun-holding hands. Good options. Keep in mind, we're going to get Thundercracker and Skywarp before too long, so those hands are going to really come in handy there in order to help us differentiate. By the way, I did not intend for that pun. It just kind of happened. Here's the thing I point out about Starscream. In a lot of ways, he's a lot more impressive than Optimus. He's larger. I argue he's better sculpted and better painted. But there's a lot more pieces to him that feel like they could be a problem down the road. Alongside that, his wings do fall off if you poke them a bit too hard. Optimus feels like a better package overall, even though I'd argue Starscream is the more ambitious package and in some ways the more impressive figure. I like them both a lot. I think I do still prefer Optimus over Starscream. But God, the Starscream is a work of art. Getting them side by side, I would point out, remember, Optimus is $100, Starscream is $120. Most of that literally just goes into the wings. But also, you can see Starscream is a little bit larger than Optimus. He has a little bit of bulk on him. He's just a touch taller. However, again, these guys are both pretty friggin' big, all things considered. Um, I don't have a Marvel Legends handy, but here's a red Optimus Prime. Red Optimus Prime is the size of a larger Marvel Legends. Think your Hyperions, for instance. And you can see they absolutely tower over a Marvel Legends scaled figure. 
It's not to scale with them, but god, they're big. Alongside that, another reason I bring out Optimus and Starscream is because his final gimmick actually involves Prime. So if you were to take off the head and take off the flight pack, there we are. We're going to put Starscream's body to the side now. We can take Optimus's head. Boop. And we can take Optimus's jetpack. Boop. And put on Starscream's head. There we go. And Starscream's jetpack, his wings. And you can see that's supposed to reference a time in the G1 cartoon. Uh, I believe it's called Megatron's Master Plan, where Starscream disguised himself as Optimus Prime. And you saw him take off an Optimus Prime helmet, and then his wings just kind of appeared out of nowhere. Um, the Masterpiece did this recently. It's just a thing people have been doing with Starscream and Optimuses lately to give you a little bit more money or value for money if you have both figures. It's cute. I don't necessarily know why I would display them like this, but, uh, I mean, if you wanted to, it's there. And in any case, I do think it's a fun little side gimmick. Of course, we are not quite done with gimmicks yet. Now, I'm going to replace Starscream's right hand real quick. Boop. Oh, there we go. The hands are pretty easy to swap out. No complaints here. I had issues with Cliff Jumper, but Starscream, it's like an absolute dream. Put this new hand in. Just gonna doop, 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 doop. There we are. And now I'm gonna pull out this sword from his jet. And then you can put it in his hand. Here, stretch out the fingers just a bit. Oop. Wow. That's a that's a tight fit. Okay. Can I get that in? Hmm. It's definitely supposed to go in. Mm. There we go. I just had to stretch out the fingers a little bit more. And that gives you a little dagger accessory. It looks fine. I'm not super big on it. Like I said, I think they're cute, but I think that's the exact type of accessory I'm going to put right back in the box for safekeeping. I don't even want to put them on the wings because I'm worried they might fall off. But then you could also take out the Null Ray, and he can hold the Null Ray as if it were just a proper gun. Oh, come on, Starscream. There we go. That looks decent. Um, again, I prefer him actually having the Null Rays on his arms, but that's an option if you would like. I said it before, but I'll say it again. I think Starscream is the most impressive figure I've seen from 3 Zero so far. I don't think they're necessarily the total full package Optimus was. I think they have more issues, but they're so much more ambitious. The design takes so many new ideas and liberties. And I love the fact that Starscream still looks slender, still looks like the type of conniving schemer we know him as, but he's bulked up so he also looks physically like a threat. It's such a weird tightrope this design walks, but you do have this interesting combination of thin limbs but bulky wings and torsos that makes this Starscream stand out. If I were to right now rank my three Zero figures, I think Starscream would be the top of the heap. He is my favorite one. And out of all of them, I would say Optimus is the one you get for a standalone. Starscream's the one you get if you can only get two and get him with either Bumblebee or the Optimus. He is a spectacular figure, even for $120. This figure is just absolutely delightful. I adore it. The three Zero tree, uh, Transformers figures are just absolutely incredible. Some of the best figures I've ever had the chance to mess with, and I adore all four of them. Starscream and Optimus are definitely a league above B and Cliff Jumper, but all four of them are great. I think they are more than worth the money, and I think Starscream in particular would make a killer standalone piece, much like Optimus does. Like I said before, I have G2 Megatron on the way, and I need to track down Hot Rod. But past that, we're just waiting for the new figures, man. Thundercracker, Skywarp, Sideswipe, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. RC, RC Cyclonus, that does, and Soundwave. I want Soundwave and Cyclonus for the Decepticons. Autobots, I need an RC, and I would like a Ratchet. But, Man, this line is just incredible. 
and I'd love, I'd love to see just how full this roster can get.